Hello and welcome to another episode of Lectures of Fallen Wisdom. Today I'm going to talk about breathing yourself into heaven. Now, I'm sure you've read certain headlines that have gotten you frustrated. Perhaps you have a political pers- uh, bent to you and uh, certain things going on in politics aren't to your liking. You feel helpless. You feel angry. You feel like, why is our society so fucked up? And you know why it is? Because you're not breathing. Because if you were breathing enough and you were breathing really deeply all the time, you would slowly walk into a utopia. The fact that you're not there is because you are limiting your breath. You still believe that something is more important than your breathing. It never is. Your breathing is the thing under which everything has to occur. Now, think about if you stopped breathing while you were swimming in water. You would die. You would quickly drown. On land, somehow, we have become particularly adept at walking around without breathing. We're like whales of the land, where we can hold our breath for very long amounts of time and live in low oxygen realms. You don't like who the president is right now? You can breathe your way into a realm where that president is either going down very hard, leaving office, or it's a different president altogether. But you have to breathe to get there. So politics is basically out of your control. And to the extent that you follow it and are not breathing, you're just making yourself breathe less. It's very important to just understand the foundation of this everything that you want to be in and you want to be in the heaven realm now you're in the heaven realm when you have maximum oxygen saturation in your blood you need to think i mean i'm even thinking maybe we should go out and get some oxygen tanks so we can just keep it up and just just to keep it in our head how important it is but those things might blow up (laughs) So let's just take in the oxygen while it's here, while it's not being polluted. Everything, all this pollution that we're doing, all this technology, all this burning of stuff, just trying to get things, trying to make money and all this ambition and stuff. This is the lower realm. This is, that's, it's, it's not heaven. You're in some kind of low oxygen realm. You want to get out of it. You want the society to improve around you. It happens with your breathing. So anytime you see something like that, it's a kind of negative headline or something that just looks like the world is, is doomed. Understand that it, it's, it's going down because for most people, the world is getting worse and worse because their breathing is getting worse and worse. And as your breathing get, gets worse and worse, the apocalypse starts to happen around you to the point where if you're, Breathing is almost non-existence. The apocalypse is occurring to you in your perception. And, and in fact, too, I mean, you, you, it dictates the very reality that you are inside. And I, I know it's hard for people to get their mind around that. Like, how is that possible? Like, you actually change the world? Like, if I just really breathe hard all day today, like, there might be a different president. You know, there might be a different, whole different structure going on, a whole different realm, a whole different reality, really. Not so bad, not so negative, not so filled with horrible things. Perhaps you've already escaped out of worse ones than this one. This is heaven compared to where you came from through your breathing. That's what happens. Is like when you go from good, when you go from like, a society that's like not so fucked up to really fucked up, you know what's going on. Your breathing has gotten really low. Now, if you want to be, you want to hold this world up with your breathing. This world surrounds you. You are the gener- You are the sun of this world. So as the sun, you can't, let yourself go dim now and then. You have to be at full capacity, chugging along 
emitting light as an example to other people who aren't doing that. Most people are dimming their light all day long through non-breathing. And they're not shining. They're not merging. They're not taking control of the reality in a positive way. And so they're just kind of being battered around by their own how, how do I put this? By their own unwillingness to see the foundational level of breathing. So when you find yourself thinking anything other than I feel good, I'm breathing, unless you're focused on a specific problem, then you really need to examine what's going on in your head and, and put a stop to it. Put a stop to it because it's like a TV that it's an annoying TV that you have on in the background and you, you finally turn it off and you're like, wow, I just like, like this silence. That's what you want your brain to be in, to be a perfectly silent waiting machine for input to come in. Having a, a, a machine that's constantly computing and constantly going over certain facts and things, oh, like repetitively, sometimes obsessively, without your control, is limiting its capacity, and it's interfering with the normal breathing pattern. Breathing has to be continuous, and to the extent that chatter of a non-intentional sort is allowed to creep into the mental processes, it, it just it, it causes a little shudder, it causes a little shutdown, and it's like a mini shutdown always occurring of a computer. Like After a while, it's it just interrupts its smooth functioning. So the Christ message was always the the kingdom of heaven is right in front of you. You just have to step into it by doing the right things. The breathing thing, I'm not sure why maybe there there were teachings. I think probably he was giving an example of breathing but the whole point is is that your the the Christ message is your kingdom of heaven is is for you to create by generating a field around yourself of heavenly a heavenly field and you can only do that by being pleasant by keeping a smile on your face but you know that's something that you can't you can't fake so understanding that that that's the the goal that you can't fake to get there you have to understand how to create that. And you create it by creating bliss inside of yourself. Now, there's a natural reservoir of a, of a bliss state inside of you, but it's constantly being interrupted and prodded by psychological, um, psychological damage that has occurred because of the, just the way the society has been educating people and kind of trying to motivate people, it tends to focus on certain markers of of success and chide you when you don't get there when ultimately, like, there are inconsistent steps, depending on what your definition of success is, that are constantly conflated to the point where you you just get constantly jerked around and basically told that whatever you're doing is wrong. And that that starts to become something internal and then it creates little anxiety hurdles that you always have to jump over and it interrupts your normal breathing. I know that was kind of a complicated mental picture. But the idea of your your main problem is just that you let your mind wander unchecked. So you understand that if you want to keep yourself breathing, that has some that is something that has to be stopped. And it can only be stopped by just observing it, by making sure that you're on top of it, that you're seeing it, that you're like, what am I doing now? What am I doing now? What am I what is my brain doing right now? And the minute you start asking that question, it's usually because you're uncomfortable anyway. But the problem is, is that when you're uncomfortable, it's many steps to that question. When you get uncomfortable, 
you start to just think that the world is just this eternally uncomfortable place. You you start to forget how it, how much power you have over this this reality. People tend to uh, people really tend to think on a very mundane level about their power in this realm. But it's it's not just like not just how you interact with people, but the thing is, is that the subtle shine on every interaction is a powerful thing, but it's not the thing. And the thing is, is that you can go beyond even that level of influence. You don't need to use your body anymore. I mean, your mental happiness, if you can just increase it to a certain level, you become magnetic and you can become so um, influential that you can just do things on a different level than you ever thought possible. That's the thing is that the possibilities become different. The laws of nature become different depending on your oxygen level. (laughs) And I don't know how this is like, this is just something that I've noticed being a time traveler because I've been in different time periods with the same mental state. So I've been able to compare certain certain changes of the mind. And because I'm a time traveler, I was trained not to forget when the timeline changed. Most people instantly forget. And there, there's, there's definitely some kind of mass psychosis going on where, like, where there's trying to get people to forget what happened when they know there was a change. You know, they call it the Mandela effect or whatever, but there's something, uh, there's something to that. There's something to the deja vu. There's something to all these little glimmers of how things might have been different. The other is if you've ever had a dream of somebody dying, like, and it was just vivid as hell and it was just like a regular day. And then all of a sudden that person is still alive when you awake that means that they did die at some in some parallel world and you instead of stopping your breathing mourning you just pumped yourself full of air and the next day they were still alive and your and your memories adjusted your memory didn't remember their death except in a dream those kinds of things you can just start to become aware of those things but it's not necessary just take my word for it your world will get better the more oxygen you take in. And in fact, that if you just did that, you'll be fine. You don't even need to do anything else. Everything you do on t- is, is less important than that. So you can basically do that all day and just sit on a bench. And you will be, in a few years, you will just be like in a totally different world. Problem is, is most people forget how they got there. They think that they got there through this or that um, wise choices that they made. No, 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 no. It's because their breathing has maintained a certain level of oxygen. And it's also the key to all beauty, you know, all these creams and potions. Yes, the diet is very important, but the most important thing is the oxygen level. And our capacity to take in oxygen gets degraded with time through the the, the decay that we inflict on the body through the food we eat and, and, and the, just the, the wear and tear. The whole aging process is a process of enduring depression over time. Of course it would be finite. There's no way you could be infinitely depressed. You could, there's no way you could spend an infinite time uh, and the model of, let's say, 85% depression and then 15% happiness, that is the model right now in terms of, like, what you deserve and what you should expect from life. The idea that pe- And the idea that people could endure that for more than 100 or so years is, is, is laughable. It's not possible. So that has to shift. That means you have to shift the emotions. You have to understand that happiness has to be there 85% of the time and unhappiness has to be like 15%. But how do you get there? 
You can't get there by acquiring things. You can't buy it. You can only get there psychologically by understanding, like, what is happiness and then just, create, like, understanding the conditions that are needed to create it in your mind and then setting to creating it. And how hard is that? It's just if you can keep your mind free of chatter, if you can keep your mind just unused when it's not being used intentionally, and it's just like a clear little lake of water that with a still top that you're just waiting for a pebble to be thrown into, that is your mind. When you have that, that is bliss state. That is the only state you need. And you won't need, you'll like be so above everything when you get into that state because you feel great. So that's the important thing is that you have to make yourself feel great by using your thoughts and organizing your thoughts and understanding what is causing what you're feeling. If it's, if it's negative stuff, it's usually you know, if nothing's immediately going on that's negative, then it's the mind indulging in in, in non-intentional thinking about something negative. And that's just, it, it's just a form of anxiety. It's a form of depression. You know, there's so many names for it. it. It doesn't really matter. It's just bad. It's bad for your psyche. It's bad for your cells. Think about your cells they don't they don't they're not thinking about these things. They're not thinking like specifically about problems the way you are. They're just like feeling the feeling. It's even worse for them. So they're not going to want to live very long under those conditions. They're going to rebel against you in the form of cancer or whatever. So you have to make sure you're making your cells feel awesome. Otherwise, they're going to be fucking pissed. And they're going to rebel against you. So the, the the body, you know, we're we're just this collection of individually celled organisms that are all joined together voluntarily. And if you're giving it a a bad ride, you if you're giving yourself a bad ride, you're giving them a bad ride. So people are very kind of hard on themselves and they they tend to think like, well, I can take it. I can be depressed. And in fact, it's sort of their badge of honor that they are depressed because they're real. They're cynical. You know, they're not happy-go-lucky. But the problem with that is you're taking your cells through that journey and your cells are going to rebel against you. So you, you're you really just doing yourself damage by allowing negativity and allowing depression to overtake you. You cannot live for very long under just the the normal depression that most people are feeling. And so that's why there is this very short lifespan as as, as things are going now. But it's the diet and it's just the the inability to the the total acceptance of this model of a, a mostly depressed life. So once we remove those conditions, then of course, then the possibility of living infinitely is is pretty pretty easy. There's nothing there's no like there's nothing weighing on your psyche, there's nothing like grinding you down. So there's no reason for you to die. Now what about the wear and tear, the normal wear and tear that uh that even animals go through? Wouldn't we be subject to that sort of aging? I mean, why are we immune from that? Why are we immune from the aging of our normal organism? Well, the reason is is because we actually have we have ascended to the top of the food chain. So now we have a sort of godlike status. We don't have natural predators. 
so we can kind of take stock and actually be better than even, you know, the, 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 let's put it this way. Animals can be assholes too, and they get punished for that too. They can't be all in a bliss state, but they're much more in a bliss state than humans ever were. In a way, this the, the way the human mind has developed has developed through a kind of depression that has been pushed down upon it, maybe by society, but at least it was susceptible to that depression. And the depression is simply this: is that your your life is not supposed to be a state of bliss. Your life is is basically seventy five percent toil and twenty five percent fun and that's just kind of how you should accept that and that's how you should live and anyone who doesn't want to live that way well you're just not living in reality and you can understand that with that kind of perspective death it would have to come in 80 years or so it it just you couldn't endure it for long much longer I mean some people get to 100 120 but they don't look too good the idea of living forever as like a complete an old liver spotted person that's not something that's appealing and that's not something that you should try to look for either you want to get to a point where you can just be a young person in good shape forever so how do you get there well you have to get there mentally you have to get there mentally, and so the and, the and you have to be in a you have to be happy. You have to be feeling good in your body. So, the mind is is the mind is a terrible thing for that kind of thing because the mind can just fill your head with fears, things that you know you're just things you remember that you don't you know you're not happy about. And it can affect your whole kind of how you're just walking around in the in the world, and then that affects your performance, and then it, it further creates more ripples of negativity. Now, the main point of this whole lecture is to just drive the the, the point home that whatever is happening in your life, your deep breathing is the best first way to change it. And as you're deep breathing, you can take certain actions, but you cannot take these actions first. So the breathing is so very important. Okay, do you are you you really want a certain outcome in, in an election? I mean, if you just think about it, you can breathe that you can breathe it. If you just breathe every time you are, if you just keep taking deep breaths, all if that's how you win the lottery. You buy a lottery ticket, and then you you put it in your pocket, and you put your hand in the pocket, and every time you feel the lottery ticket, you take a deep breath, and you try to keep your breathing up, and you keep your breathing up. You'll win the lottery. It's like that's the kind of thing that – that's the kind of power. Things that you want to happen will happen. Things that you don't even know you wish for will be given to you. While the things that you wish for, you won't even remember what they are anymore. Or you might just get the things that you wish for. These are all things that occur, and you're and the world has, the world is your world. Okay, the world is it's it's not a static world. That's sort of another thing that I have to drive home here. This world is totally one hundred percent dependent on your breathing. So, and you can, and and we can, and the thing is, is we split off into the worlds that are good for us. There's many different versions of this world. There's very hellish versions that are even worse than the one that you think you're in, that you think is hellish. Much worse. But there are some higher, higher realms too, where just like, People have kind of just like cooler heads have prevailed. It's maybe the same people, but they're they're all breathing on a certain level. And you might argue that like every, there's a version of us living on every level. 
So there's a version of us living in the absolute hell realm version, the lowest oxygen realm. There's somebody just being just like really hating it down there. That's one version of us. And then there's another version of us that is living in an absolute um, utopia, which some people call the kingdom of heaven. And you can kind of, as you, you know, you can basically float from down, you can go down to hell and you can float all the way back to heaven just by how you organize your mind, by how you, and how you, how, how much oxygen you're allowing yourself to take in. Those two combination things are what are the key. And you notice that they're actually side, two sides of the same coin. That is to say, to the extent that your mind is chattering about something that you're not intentionally thinking about is to the extent that you're not breathing. And to the extent that you are breathing, your mind is basically gets occupied with the, the, the processing of oxygen. And so it's not chattering as much. It's actually clearing the mind because the mind needs to occupy itself now with processing the oxygen because the oxygen has a mental component too and your brain needs it and your brain needs to process it. So when oxygen is coming in your brain, your brain is not as, uh, is basically not going to be chattering at all. But the, when it's, it starts chattering specifically, maybe it's an alarm clock to wake you up it starts chattering because oxygen is not coming in. It leaves it idle. There's nothing for your brain to do when oxygen is not coming in. So oxygen has to be constantly being pushed into the brain through your breathing apparatus. Otherwise, your brain will just start to turn itself on, generate a whole bunch of negative emotions. I think it is probably an alarm just to get you to wake up and start breathing again. So it basically makes you feel like shit and depressed and have anxiety until you start breathing again. Instead, people go to the psychiatrist and be like, I have all this anxiety. And the, and the psychiatrist doesn't just slap them in the face and be like, breathe, motherfucker, and get out of my office, and here's your money back. But, you know, of course, like, <laughs> I might just, like, become a psychiatrist just to do that, just to, just to have that be my treatment. And just be like, get out of here and give them the money. Like, throw it at them in cash. Be like, just make a real impression on them. That, that, like, that, and maybe have a little talk with them after that, you know, so they never forget. Point is, you have to stay breathing, like, really deep. And you have to be like, I, and I know I constantly say it because I don't listen to it. But you have to understand that, like, anything that's happening in the world that you don't like, that you feel like you don't have control over, you do have control over it. Because you're breathing in the higher oxygen world, what you want comes to pass. In the higher oxygen world, your dreams, they come true. That's as simple as that. You know, the, the president you want will be the president you have. I guarantee you, just breathe yourself there. And I don't care what political, I don't care if you want, the Republican to be president or the Democrat, whatever, because you can be in whatever world you deserve to be in. They don't, that's the thing is like these higher oxygen realms, you're not allowed to go in as a low oxygen human and fuck it all up. You're not allowed to be there. They're going to keep you at a certain level according to how much oxygen you're taking in. That's how you get rewarded in this world. I don't care if you've murdered thousands of people. Actually, I do care if you murder dozens of people. Turn yourself in. But I'm just saying, even after, even if you have terrible things you've done in your past, they've all been done because you were low oxygen. They've all been done because your mind was not really here. But they, but nothing is is more criminal to this realm than withholding your breathing. Because you can do it. You have, you know, you're, there's no reason why you shouldn't be doing it. It'll make you happier. It'll make you a, a more positive force in the world. But not only that, for yourself, you're going to be living in a much better world. A higher oxygen realm where the, it's not 
as dire as it is now, where everything is just like pretty much working fine and, you know, there's relative peace and there's not like all this conflict. That's something you have to breathe to get into. Now people are like, oh, well, you're just going to breathe and get all high on oxygen and it's going to make you think that this shitty world is not as bad as it really is. So you're just going to be like so high on oxygen that you're just not going to see reality and you're going to be like a Pollyanna and think everything's fine. Fine. Okay. I'll accept that. But isn't that a better feeling? <laughs> but I don't, I don't agree with it, but I'm just saying like, yeah, like get yourself into that positive state because even if you want to stay in this fucking reality, like say you just want to stay here and make a change. You don't want to go into the higher realm. Like you want to become a positive force, like a Jesus Christ force on this plane and not go into the higher realm with the, with the people like you. You can do that, but you have to, your oxygen level has to be super intact. I mean, you have to be basically forming a whirlpool of air around yourself. So you have to just make sure you can take in all the oxygen you can. Now, one of the best ways to take in oxygen is through your skin. And one of the best ways to make sure your skin is receiving oxygen in an unobstructed way is using a dry skin brush. If you get like a kind of a harsh brush and in the morning, just before you take a shower when you're dry, just brush every inch of your body. It'll get like a whole bunch of dead skin out of your pores and it'll allow you to uh, take in more oxygen. Remember, we we get almost 50% of our oxygen through our skin. So it's very important to like keep that the skin um, clear of, of dead skin. And so that's why the dry skin brush is good. But also, the main thing is just keeping the mind from interrupting the, the thought process by by keeping your breathing going you're keeping the mind from taking up negative thoughts by keeping your mind from taking up negative thoughts you're keeping your breathing going two sides of the same coin you're going through life like that you also should at that point if you get to, if you're doing this right a smile should start to come up in your face a little smile, an inescapable smile, because you will feel joy. If that's not happening, then you have to come back to the steps again. And the steps are always, you know, am I, what am I thinking about? If I'm thinking about something negative, let me, let me identify that. Let me understand that. Let me think about it intentionally for like five minutes. Let me come up with, one step of my next step in the solving of the problem. You know, if this is a real problem, then you, you, but then once that's over, you'd say, okay, I've thought about that problem. So I'm not going to let that come into my mind for nothing anymore. And the idea is that you don't tolerate your mind just having things come into it. You you treat your mind like a machine that you want to use when you're thinking, and you want it to be completely open and ready for communication and not occupied by some past processing, and you want it to be keenly in the moment. So it cannot be having thoughts in it unless you're thinking them. So you have to understand how to distinguish between thoughts that you're thinking and thoughts that your subconscious is thinking that are just thrown into your mind then that you take up and then feel shitty about. So just being very clear about the the foundation of all of this and, and, and understanding whenever you get frustrated by anything that your first step is to take a, is to take a deep breath and keep breathing deeply and understand that that is the key to everything. That is the way that you're going to get ultimately what you want. And all of the other stuff that you could do to affect it are just like, they're there, but they're not nearly as effective in a low oxygen version of yourself. 
So all the steps that you're going to be taking, even if they are overt steps and not just the breathing, they will be more effective the more oxygen you have inside of you. I think I've beat this up, but I just think that it's one of those things that I always forget, and it's it's one of the lost, most um, forgot, forgotten things just about about being alive and how important it is. Thank you.